okay so in this talk i'm going to describe various techniques for manipulating equations in groups so what i mean by that is that that i have a group and i have some equation involving elements of the group and using the operations of the group and i want to figure out what kind of algebra i can do manipulating it just like you learned algebra in school or college where you multiply things on both sides etc which of those operations make sense in groups so what you have to remember is that in groups we have associativity we have identity and we have inverses but we do not have what yeah. commutativity and that's something you have to remember because you're used to doing equation manipulation in commutative worlds where you can be sort of careless about some things but now with groups you cannot be careless about those things let me just explain what i mean by left multiply so I have an expression of the form, I have an equation of the form B equals C, where these B and C may not be single letters, they may be like huge expressions. What do I mean when I say left multiply by A? I just multiply by A on the left on both sides. So I'll get what? A, B equals to A, C. Yes. The crucial thing is that I... I put A on the left in both the left side and the right side, right? I couldn't write AB equals CA because you don't know about commutativity. So if instead you did right multiplication by A on the original thing, what would you have got? BA equals to CA. Now you could left multiply by something and right multiply by something else, right? And then you put something on the left and that's something else on the right. But you have to be careful. Whatever thing you do, if you're doing left multiplication, you should put it on the left both places. If you're doing right multiplication, you should put it on the right in both places. Now, you could also multiply two equations. That's the second. So we get this one. Let's see, multiply two equations. So let's say you have A equals B and C equals C. Now, you can multiply. When you're multiplying two equations, you have to be careful about which equation you treat on the as a left one and which one is the right one. So you could multiply and get what? You could get A C equals B D. Right? Mm -hmm. If you want if you if you used you could also get A D equals B C if you want. Right? You just treat the B as the left side here. You could also get C A equals B B. Right? If you chose the C D as the left thing and the A B as the right thing. You could get CB equals DA. What can you not get? You cannot get, so these are all okay. Whereas AC equals DB is not. Right? Mm -hmm. Because if you are choosing to put this equation as a left thing, in on the left side, you cannot put the other one as a left thing on the right side. So actually two lefts and rights, you know, one is the left and right within each equation and other is the left and right within the multiplication. So don't get confused by that. The point is that you should just multiply them in a consistent way. So there are the three other wrong, wrong conclusions you could write. I'm not writing them. The key thing is you have to remember whether you did stuff on the left side or the right side. Okay. Now cancel stuff. So cancellation. What would cancellation say? It would say AB equals AC implies B equals C. Okay, and now again, instead of just letters, you could have huge expressions here. Okay, you also have BA equals CA implies B equals C. This is right cancellation. How do you actually prove cancellation? You multiply on the left by A inverse, right? For this. For this, you multiply on the right by inverse. So that's how you actually prove it. But since since we already know this, we could sort of skip that step and directly write this, right? Now, if you recall, maybe when you started algebra in school or college, when you first when you first did cancellation, you didn't do it as cancellation. You said multiply both sides by a inverse. Maybe maybe that's how you did it, right? Instead of just saying cancel it. But then after some time, you just got careless and you said cancel a from both sides. So the same is true in group theory, right? In the beginning, you would say multiply both sides by inverse, but now you've shown cancellation holds, you can just cancel. Now, can you cancel A here? Hmm? No. no. Because here it's appearing on the left here and on the right here, and that's not enough. You can cancel stuff. You can also cancel one thing from the left and one thing from the right. So you could do... ABD equals ACD 
implies B equals C. So what you're doing is you sort of first do the left cancellation, then the right cancellation. Okay, to do that. Okay, now transpose to one side. This is interesting. So let's say I have a let me just change the color of the writing. Let's say I have let's do it more explicitly. So I have a one, a two, a n is b1, b2, bn. Now suppose I want to move b1 to the left side. Okay? How can I do that? So say I want to transpose the b1 here. Well, what I do is I multiply by b1 in both on both sides. On the left. Remember, whenever multiplying by an element, you have to specify whether you are multiplying on the left or right. So what do I get? Hmm? So my goal is to move the B1 here. And the way to do that is you multiply by B1 inverse on the left. So what do I get? B1 inverse A1. Times the whole thing. And now here B1 inverse B1 would cancel. And I would just be left with B2. B2 to B1. So you can transpose the leftmost thing in either side by multiplying by its inverse on the left. Mm -hmm. You can similarly transpose the rightmost thing. So instead of doing this, sorry, uh, instead of doing this, I could have transposed BM. I could have transposed this one. How would I have transposed this one? Multiply by. Hmm? Transpose which one? The last one. To the left, so I want to move this one here. Oh, yeah, on the right side. on the right on both sides. So on the right, I mean the right end of each side. So what would I get? A one, A two, A n, B m inverse, B one, B two. But now I stop at BM minus 1 because the BM and its inverse would cancel. Mm -hmm. Right? So now, once you are a little more comfortable with this, you can sort of skip writing multiply by B inverse. You just sort of directly say transpose B. Mm -hmm. But you have to be careful because this really does matter that it's at the end. So you could do B1 by multiplying on the left. You could do BM. And similarly, you could move A1 to the right by multiplying on the left or you could move AN to the right by multiplying on the right. But you cannot transpose things on the inside directly. Right? You cannot move B2 directly to the left side. Okay? You would have to first move B1 and then you could move B2 after that. But you cannot move B2 directly. Mm -hmm. Right? So you have to be a little careful about this. By the way, there's, in all of these, there's two left and right going on. One is the left and right within each expression and the other is the left side and right side. So just be careful about that when I'm talking like figuring out what I'm saying. Okay, so that's the transpose to one side. So middle terms cannot be directly transposed, right? You first need to clear out the stuff on the left or the right, and once it's at the edge, then you can transpose it. Okay, next thing is solving for an element. So suppose I give you this this equation. Now I want to say solve for B2 in terms of the others. How would you do that? B1 is to B1 inverse, A1 edges, B2 inverse. That's absolutely correct, but how do you get it? So you said it's B1 inverse, A1, A2, A3. Right. That's right, but how did you get it? You just multiply both the equation B1 inverse on the left and B3 inverse on the right. Yeah, so you first sort of transfer, intuitively you transpose the B1 here and you transpose the B3 here. Right? Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. So you sort of cleared out the terms one by one. Now, if the product had been longer, you would have to have to do more transpositions. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, though, the, though you could do them all together using the reversal law. We'll come to that. Okay, good. So we, we've seen briefly the solve for an element method. Okay, now I want to mention one more thing, which is that 
if you have powers going on, if an element appears with powers, then you may not be able to solve for it. So suppose I give you something like x square equals g. And I want to solve for x in terms of g. This cannot be done just using group operations. Right? Because there is no group operation for taking the square root. Mm -hmm. Now, in the group you are actually working with, you may be able to solve it by knowing, having like methods for that group. But there is no general expression I can write for x in terms of g. Right? So, this cannot be generically solved. Okay. okay? Similarly, so this is not possible in general. Now, in a particular group, you have to like use information about the group structure to get it, but you cannot write an expression for x in terms of g. Uh, in general. So, if I have something like this, this is even worse because it's not even possible to isolate. So, it's, it's not possible to solve for x in terms of g and h, but it's not even possible to isolate x on one, powers of x on one side. Right. So, in the previous equation, although we didn't solve for x, we did get power of x on one side and everything on the other side is completely independent of x. But now with this expression, you cannot even do that. You cannot even get one side just a power of x and the other side has all the, has a constant, basically something in terms of g and h. You cannot even do that. Okay. So, when you have a variable repeated, that's when you start getting problems. Either if it's a power or it's repeated in this way. Right. Whenever an element is repeated, then you have problems in trying to solve for it. Okay. Next, bring everything to one side. Well, can you do that? Whenever you have a quality in a group, you can always bring everything to one side. Well, what will what will be left on the other side once you bring everything to one side? Hmm? I want to sort of move everything to the left side. Mm -hmm. will be e -E. the identity element mm -hmm. right so what I want to do is I want to multiply by the inverse of this whole thing on the left if you want so what I what I'll get is that this is the identity element So, for any any uh, equation in a group, you can always move everything to one side. Now, what I really did here is I just took this whole thing and I multiplied by the inverse of the whole thing and I used the reversal law. Remember the reversal law? Say the inverse of this is just the product of the inverse and reverse. But you could also have done it step by step. You could have first transpose B1, then B2, then B3 and so on. You would have got the same answer, but you couldn't do it directly if you know, how, if you remember how to invert product. Okay, so that actually covers the last two things. So what I'm saying, if you, if you remember the reversal law for inverting products, you can move the whole chunk together rather than doing it one at a time. Okay, great. Uh, 